Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, happy Friday. Thank you very much for taking the time out to join us on this webinar this afternoon, uh, the introduction to Skype for Business webinar. If uh, somebody could be so kind as to just put in the chat whether you can uh, hear us, it'd be very much appreciated. Don't want to start uh, rambling on. Nobody can hear. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Shane. Very, very much appreciated. That's great. Okay. Just to make sure the people that can't hear. Great, thank you, Howard. Very much appreciated. So, to just uh, run you briefly through the uh, agenda for this afternoon's session, I'm going to start off with uh, an introduction to uh, to Nexus and, and who we are, and then really get on to the the meat of the presentation and answering a few questions. So, uh, what is uh, what is Skype for business, what it can do for you. We'll then uh, look to break that up with a uh, demo of the client, um, then move on to what's coming next with, uh, with the product. Um, a couple of case examples of uh, who, are, who is using it and, uh, and why others are using it. And then uh, a couple of next steps and look to move into a, a Q&A session. You can uh, feel free to ask questions uh, via the chat but I will be doing a Q&A session at the end uh, for, uh, for everyone uh, to ask any questions they might have. Um, the session is being recorded and will be provided following, um, so uh, this will be made available to you. So to introduce myself, uh, I am one of the pre-sales IT consultants that work for uh, Nexus. I've been in the industry for 14 years and I am uh, certified and uh, in, in every sense of the word, especially when it comes to Microsoft licensing. Um, as uh, I'm sure many of you are aware, it can be uh, somewhat challenging. I also have the, uh, the joy of, of our responsibility, uh, sorry, relationship responsibility here at Nexus. Um, so uh, not only do I uh, talk about the products, but I also get an, an idea of, of what Microsoft are looking to do moving forward in a more general sense. Um, that is me. At this point, I would actually like to hand over to uh, my colleague, Kelly and Wellsman, who would like to provide a bit of an overview of, of Nexus and uh, and the link store. Hi there. Um, i tell you what, I think from looking at the guest attendees, quite a few of you people know us. So a bit of Friday after, afternoon, actually, if you waggle your mice and just saying hello, that'd be great. Uh, for those that don't, Nexus has been here for the uh, last 15 years. Um, obviously, we're based in Pines Hill, and there are actually 70 of us here. Um, the majority of our work is actually based around, as you can see, Skype for Business and Software Development Consultancy, VMware. Um, we do a lot of work within the business community and also local government, um, whether it's here, London, or abroad. Um, as you can see on the right-hand part of our slide, we have our, our internet company, Linkstore, which is basically the, the go-to place nowadays, I, I gather. Um, for telecoms equipment to actually use with such a link and Skype for business. I have a feeling there is a, a new version on its way on its way um, that will actually be badged up. That's UC, correct, yeah. UC, um, UC people. Yeah, I think the delay is, is to be confirmed, but uh, essentially being now that the products moved from link to Skype for business, obviously it's probably not as appropriate, so we're looking at it a rebrand of the domain. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, and based on that website, things... Um, Contains your headsets, your handsets, and also things that might media converters, which a lot of people tend to forget about, uh, which obviously are very, very important uh, until um, uh, Skype for Business goes into the cloud completely. So, all right, so I'm going to hand you back to Chris, and he can keep you going on this uh, horrible Friday afternoon. Thank you very much. Right, okay, thank you again, everyone, for, for joining. So we'll now look to get into the uh, to the meat of this. Um, so this is very much a, an introductory session to Skype for Business. It's uh, sort of a very high-level overview of, uh, of the product set. Um, so if there are any particular technical questions that you might have along the way, do please feel free to ask them. I uh, personally might not be able to answer them straight away, but I can. I certainly have resource um, to to come back to you on. 
So uh, moving moving on to it, uh, as my uh, opening slide, if if any of you saw uh, stated, uh, Sky for Business connecting people everywhere to achieve more together. Uh, Sky for Business is a communications and collaboration platform that brings together the familiar experience and user love of Skype with the security, compliance, and control that you've come to expect from Microsoft. It has all the capabilities of Link for users and administrators. Um, so. For, use, uh, for those of you that are aware of uh, or were aware of the previous iteration, that was Microsoft Link. Um, there's no uh, loss in capability in the move to Skype for Business. If anything, there is actually uh, an, an increase in, in capability. Uh, they've obviously improved the UI. If, if any of you have seen the client, I, I alluded to the fact that we'll be doing a, a demo moving moving uh, when we move through the presentation this afternoon. So you will see that. It has the improved UI to take advantage of the Skype icons and colors to simplify adoption. The multi-deployment option is something that we will, uh, I will looking to touch on as well throughout this, uh, which includes server, cloud, and a combination of the two. Uh, security, compliance, and control features uh, that enterprise is required is also something that they've, uh, they've very much included in there. Um, I know that there's certain industries where there's uh, a lot of regulation around uh, communication, so this has very much been included in, in the product set. Essentially, Microsoft's ambition is, is rather simple, is to create the most loved and trusted communication platform for doing things together. So that whole collaboration piece, uh, Microsoft are, are very much um, working towards. That's not just uh, that's not just when you talk about Skype business, but that's when you talk about uh, essentially the way Microsoft is going to market as a whole, uh, especially around Office 365. When you look at the likes of SharePoint, Yammer, uh, the new uh, functionality within Office 2016, and obviously Skype for Business. So as you can see with the uh, on the screenshots there, the uh, the similarities between uh, Skype and, and Skype for Business. You've got um, Skype uh, for Business there on the left hand side on the on the larger PC display, and then if you look, you've got uh, sort of a more of a Skype interface there on on the tablet. It really takes advantage of uh, people's familiarity and comfort with Skype to make adoption easier, fa faster within the enterprise. Skype for Business makes it possible to connect to anyone on Skype using IM, audio, and video. And also Skype has the full capabilities that people have come to expect with Link, usable from large screens to small screens. So you think about um, you, ha you can have your client on your desktop, but when you're, you, you're out and about or you want to use the tablet version of the, uh, of the client, these, these are available, and these are also available on multi-platform, which very much ties into to Microsoft messaging moving forward uh, in support of iOS, Android, uh, and Mac. Um, they are uh, keenly firm to, uh, to support these as platforms because they're aware that they're not the only vendor in the market anymore. So with uh, Skype for Business, Microsoft offering uh, the server, online, and hybrid deployment options. Uh, these are all based on the underlying Link and Skype technology, all inter interoperating with Office 365 Active Directory and other foundational technology. So I said that uh, it wasn't just, uh, or I essentially alluded to the fact that it was, it was more than uh, just a facelift, so it was more than just the fact that it looks like uh, the Skype. They have actually added in uh, additional technologies in the in the move from from Link to um, Skype for Business. This is very much uh, in the server uh, space as well. So things that they have they have added uh, native interoperability with uh, numerous ta Cisco Tambo conferencing uh, models. So beyond just obviously the uh, Skype for Business endpoints uh, and uh, room systems, there's also offering integration for uh, legacy. Uh, systems there as well. There is a uh, new call via work feature for leveraging existing PBX handsets. So where you've made investments in your existing PBX uh, units, we can look to use call via work as a way of uh, retaining some of that investment. Obviously, uh, Nexus have been doing um, similar things with using uh, gateways from the likes of audio codes and Sonos uh, historically. So it's not something that's particularly uh, unfamiliar with us because we've managed to leverage uh, historic investments uh, by doing so. 
And they've also included <clears throat> support for SQLoys on to add resiliency for the backend database service. Now, this was available in, in, in previous versions, but it was, uh, it's very much where they're taking advantage of the SQL always on resiliency, uh, which is, uh, which is a new, uh, a new feature, uh, to the, uh, to the software. So Microsoft are also advancing their online service as part of Office 365, including the ability to host much larger meetings. Uh, today, the, the attendee limit on Office 365 meetings is around 250, but they have uh, increased that somewhat so more recently into, uh, into several thousand, uh, thousands of attendees. Both online and, and server customers will have the option to use larger online meetings for server customers. This is an enterprise example of you. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> of using the cloud to make the server deployment even better. Other hybrid options including connecting the Skype for Business server to Exchange Online and splitting the users between Skype for Business server and Skype for Business Online. So they really are talking about a flexible uh, migration to, uh, to your on-premise infrastructure in the cloud, but also looking to, again, utilize that existing investment that you've made on-premise with your server investments. So from its launch, Link has made it possible for people to easily work anywhere with an internet connection, uh, whether that be at home, on the road, or around the business campus. It does this by providing encrypted, uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, encrypted communications without needing a VPN and using encoding and signaling technology that works on nearly any network. So this goes back to, again, if you think about the, the types of devices and, and what have you, Microsoft are really enabling that ability to communicate regardless of where you are on, on any device. They also allow people to uh, reach others in, in ways that make the most sense. So with the ability to text message, call, video, and even sharing content using Skype for Business. There's also deeper integration with uh, products such as uh, Outlook uh, and Word. So you really do get the ability for that deep integration and collaboration from, from whichever products you're using. So you're able to launch, uh, for example, you can launch calls and, and IMs from within uh, within your office applications. It's something, again, which I will uh, show when we get through to the demo. Moving on to the, uh, the collaboration piece. Link did always support um, online meetings with audio, video, and content, and eliminated the need for separate services and costs. Skype for Business uh, continues this and improves this with enormous benefit. Uh, Microsoft uh, do tend to like to use themselves as a, a case reference. Um, an example of this is they made an $8 million saving per year by eliminating their dial-in audio conferencing charges, and they saved $10 million uh, per year by eliminating travel. So you think that for the need for, or you sort of eliminating the need to uh, to go to meetings here, there, and everywhere, um, you can just do this uh, via a call, whether that be uh, a point-to-point -point call, video conference on your uh, desktop, to if you see on the image in the background, uh, there's a Surface Hub uh, that uh, people are using. Or you can also look at the, uh, the Skype for Business Room systems as well, which are available. <clears throat> so Microsoft know that connecting with coworkers, customers, and partners is critical for, for business. But too often, communication is blocked by technology silos, competing platforms, and dis distance and security concerns. Link Unified, Communi Link Unified Communications uh, remove this uh, barrier by streamlining a single solution for your, uh, for all the different ways to communicate and share. This benefit was uh, most seen inside the organization, uh, but with Skype for Business, they are truly looking to extend this beyond uh, just inside the organization when you think of the integration with the Skype client itself. So now you can connect to anyone, uh, even people who are outside the organization. Uh, so doctors can communicate with patients, employers can interview candidates. Essentially, the, the it's 
uh, unlimited the uh, potential for the ways in which people will be able to communicate and it doesn't necessarily involve the uh, inf- uh, the, the, the employer the, uh, the business to make a great deal of investment on, on that side because you think that there's uh, a great number of people that will have Skype uh, already Okay, so reducing complexity. Um, I think that's that's the the main goal for for a lot of uh, of people managing infrastructure now, and that's the that's really the the, the way in which things are are going. Um, if you think that you've got uh, services like Cisco Go to Meeting, uh, you've got your uh, phone system itself, um, and a whole host of other potential services that you uh, will negate uh, because you'll be able to use Skype for Business as a, essentially a single pane of glass. So your infrastructure will be uh, consolidated in doing so. And uh, the support for those systems will uh, will be reduced in, in doing so as well because uh, you will be using a single consolidated system as opposed to having to support multiple, <coughs> excuse me, different types of systems. So at this point, uh, I think it's best to uh, just uh, start the demo. Uh, This is going to be on our live environment, uh, so please uh, do bear with me. Whilst what I do is just uh, switch over to uh, screen share so you can see what I'm, I'm doing. Just to let you know, as I uh, as I move into present my desktop, I have uh, I have been offered a warning by Skype for Business to say that people will see everything on my uh, on my screen. Um, but don't worry, there's nothing uh, particularly incriminating there. Okay, so all being well, you should be able to see my desktop. If somebody could just uh, type in the chat just to confirm that is the case. Great, thank you, Shane. So if I uh, start off by uh, showing you the Skype for Business client itself, uh, you can see at the top here, just actually just so I can see if there are any questions. Okay, how I just, okay, I'll just, Hold on for two seconds. Okay. Is it is it still saying uh, saying it's loading, Howard, or or is it uh, loaded up yet? Okay, great. So uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just I'll just continue. Um, okay, so back to uh, the client itself. Um, as you can see at the the top here, this is very much uh, the section uh, about me. You can see uh, my lovely my lovely photo there of of me. Um, also, very much is in the same with uh, with SharePoint and a lot of Microsoft um, software. They've got this. What's happening? So. If I was so inclined, I could uh, I could write a comment in there to say. Uh, Hello. So people will now see that that is what is happening with me. Um, I'm. You can also see here uh, the status. So obviously it says I'm presenting at the moment, but there's a, a, a set of other available statuses that I could be be setting. Um, the fact that it automatically set my status to presenting when I started presenting and does the same uh, with uh, with certain other 
so if we're, if we're in a meeting or what have you, it will show me as uh, busy. If I'm on the phone, it will tell people that I am also on the phone. These can also be customized as well. So we've worked with certain customers that uh, wanted uh, it to reflect a certain status, uh, which uh, so if there's anything specific uh, to you, you, you'd like to do, you can feel free to do so. Can also set my location as well. So I'm obviously in the office in, in Exeter. Uh, and that's my status but if you're out and about uh, this can also also be auto populated as well um, should you feel, feel you'd like to do so so as you can see if we move downwards and on this first, uh, first section here this is the contacts tab you can search for people by name so I could search for Zoe this will bring up uh, obviously bring up uh, Zoe because search for her. But these uh, the contact section can you can choose whichever way you want to view it. So I typically like to group my view mine in groups so I can group people in together. So if I need somebody in the tent group, say if I don't want to if I don't search for them, I can just scroll down. You can also do it based upon status and relationship. And also new, so if anybody specifically added you, you can uh, you can go in and, and and see who's added you. But then you can also add individuals here if you see the little uh, little person with the plus symbol. <clears throat> the next section is is chat rooms. It's not something that we use a great deal of uh, here at, uh, at Nexus, but should you wish to do so, uh, you can set up uh, chat rooms for for specific teams say so we've got a sales chat room there which is uh, very much just contains members of the sales group so we'll have a chat group uh, specifically for them or a collaboration group as well so you can escalate to calls and, and what have you <clears throat> this next section is uh, essentially as you expect with a uh, traditional and you can see all your communications here. So there's a history history of them. So you can see all the, the types of calls. So I've made IMs, 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 and uh, there's missed calls there and, and what have you. Also notifies of, includes a notification of meetings in there. Um, again, we can look at the missed conversations and again, breaking it down to just, just calls as well. I personally use a headset. Um, a lot of people still use traditional handsets, uh, so with users like myself, you, uh, where you do use a headset and you don't necessarily copy and paste a telephone number to put in there or what have you, you can use this dial pad here uh, to, to call people to dial numbers, but also has access to your voicemails here as, as well. And the final tab along here is a quick access calendar, so you can see that that is my, my calendar for today. You can see there is a meeting here that is in blue. This actually uh, demonstrates that this is an online meeting. So should I wish to do so, I could double click and join that online meeting from within the Skype console itself. So it's essentially a single pane of glass for all your communication. So if I move back to the um, contacts tab and pick on an individual, I can see that uh, if I just hover my mouse over Zoe, for example, or say somebody who's at their desk, uh, Tom Carver, I can see that he's green, so he's available. And it also gives me the option of, of ways to interact with, uh, with Tom. So I can send that, I can send him an IM, I can call him, but also I have the option to, to call him uh, at his desk uh, or whether that's on his mobile. I can video chat should I wish to do so. Or if it's uh, if I need further information on, on him, say, I could click on his contact card as well. So as we are picking on Tom, I will uh, double click and just to show you how simple it is to use the uh, application itself. I will send Tom a message. So as you can see, uh, this is the uh, the client uh, I've loaded to to speak to Tom. 
I also have the ability to <clears throat> attach items. So should I wish to collaborate with Tom on, on something, I could uh, attach a file. But you can also drag and drop. So should I wish to do so, I can just drag and drop a uh, file into here. And, uh, and as you can see, it will load and uh, transfer across to Tom. See my spelling's great right on Friday. Uh, we also have the again. Uh, we have the ability to uplift the uh, conversation into a uh, video call, uh, just a normal call. Or also, there's the uh, option to present additional content. So if I wanted to share a PowerPoint with him, for example, or just another program, we can do so. Uh, it should Tom Tom and I's conversation uh, escalate, and we need to involve somebody else, it's a simple case of just clicking invite more people. Uh, all nice and straightforward again searchable so here these are the most recent people that I've, I've spoken to so we can just look to add another person into the call nice straightforward just click on Dave okay and it'll be simply added in to that And there's something else to consider with uh, it's beyond Skype business. Uh, with with Office 2016 newly released, we can also talk about um, live auditing of documents. So we could collaborate. So I'll load the application into this, and we can actually work together collaboratively, uh, collaboratively uh, in real time, as opposed to. Historically, where it gave you the impression that it was uh, it was somewhat real time. Right, so if I just jump back to the call, we can. Uh... So you can see the call here itself. What I can do with this call, uh, there's no better example of using the system itself. <coughs> Excuse me. can start my video so you can see that um, there is me on my rather sizable headset I assume you can all see my uh, my video that's, that's just loaded great stuff okay um, I can obviously mute myself and you can see at the moment that I am actually presenting my desktop as I said, we as I said previously, when I was in my conversation with Tom, we can look to present other content. So at the moment, I am presenting my desktop. If you've got multiple screens, you can uh, you can present those. Or if you've got multiple screens and you want to show one but not all, you can select to do so. Uh, programs, as I said, so examples of of your typical Office applications. And as I was doing earlier, there's PowerPoint files. If you can just point it as a specific PowerPoint file and it will load that. We can add attachments to the call as well. So if you don't necessarily need to show something, but you want a handout for, for people on the call, you can make that available in there. And that's the same with shared notes. So shared notes will be using OneNote um, to make those notes available to people. Something else we can do as well is it will knock me off the, uh, it will remove me from uh, presenting my desktop if, if I do so. But another bit of functionality that we can also you do using Skype for Business is whiteboarding. So that will create a whiteboard and um, as you'd expect with a whiteboard, we'll be able to interact um, and uh, map out uh, whatever you may be using the whiteboard. You can also do polling. So if there's any questions that I'd like to ask as part of the call, I could create those polls. And finally, um, Functionality on there that you will see at the end because I will be using uh, Q&A myself when we come to questions at the end of this session. Uh, so it's uh, it's just a simple as as a click. Uh, it's, it's, it couldn't be any more straightforward, which is the whole idea around Skype. This is simplicity for the user. <clears throat> so we see on the uh, bottom right. Sorry, 
here's call controls as well so should I wish to do so I could transfer uh, I could transfer this transfer this call uh, I've got multiple devices plugged into this so when Kelly and I was speaking earlier uh, together we were using a conference phone but as you can see this rather sizable headset on my on my head at the moment if you uh, can see my video um, I, I have the ability to choose between which one that we're actually using at the time and that's that's one of the other the beauties of Skype for Business really is this a uh, device agnosticity if that is actually a word but the fact that we can uh, use speaker phones headsets handsets you name it i think there is uh, quite possibly a device available at, at the moment for for skype for business or if not there is will be one coming i'm sure looking at the call itself um obviously we we are recording today's session but there's the ability to start recording there um we can specify the meeting uh, options. So, um, for example, everybody within our organization has the will be a presenter automatically when they log in the call. Everybody that's not will just be a uh, attendee of that. So we can really true we can truly um, specify sort of specifics around around um, what attendees can can do. More so, if you look at participant actions here on the left hand side. Um, We've muted the audience, so we don't want everybody. You don't necessarily want everybody to talk uh, because there'll be a lot of background noise potentially. Uh, we can disable meeting IM. Uh, we've disabled attendee video. But again, should you wish to have a call uh, and everybody use their video, the top six will be active. And then, um, as as people talk more, they get moved up the chain. And, all, and the most recent speaker will be shown uh, at the in the window, as you can see down the bottom there. With me, um, if you want to invite additional people, obviously we can we can do so, but uh, via email. But if you wanted to add additional people into the call, we can do this up in the right hand corner here with the invite more people button. So I talked about uh, interaction with with other applications. If we look at my Outlook. Here, and you can see this morning that uh, everybody in Nexus enjoyed a, uh, a Friday breakfast sandwich, which we which we typically do. You can see using Stacy as an example here, and this is a this is a, this is um, the uh, the level of integration that we have. I can just uh, hover my mouse over uh, Stacy here, and I've got that same level of interaction as I did within the Skype for Business client. So I can send her an IM. I can give her a call again, give her a call on whichever number it would be preferred, start a video, or again, email her, although I'm already in Outlook, so I'm not quite sure why that is there. But if I click on this drop box as well, I can view her contact card, because so I've got that same level of, of interaction within Outlook as I do within the Skype client itself. Um, something else to, to, to note within, within Outlook itself is your conversation history is also saved. So you can scroll back through that conversation history. <coughs> and finally, just uh, just as, as to, to finish the demo, I just want to show how simple it is to set up a Skype for Business meeting. So it's a case of just double clicking into your calendar, so opening a new invite and just clicking once uh, on Skype for meeting. And it's as simple as that uh, to set one up. So incredibly straightforward, could not be simpler. I think the idea of one click or only two clicks within that is um, is really something that Microsoft are, are, are pushing quite heavily. So if I just jump out of that now, so that is uh, just to draw a line under the demo, I'll just look to jump back into the uh, PowerPoint. <clears throat> If you just bear with me a second while it loads. Um, if somebody could just confirm that they can see the PowerPoint back on the screen, that'd be great. <laughs> great stuff. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Howard. So uh, moving on, looking at the, uh, the Skype business timelines, so we're talking about really what, what's, uh, what's going to be moving forward. 
Uh, Skype Business itself uh, has been is is available and has been so for for several months now. Uh, the meeting solution there that it says on the screen, the second box down, uh, which Microsoft have dubbed the uh, broadcast meeting, is 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 also being made available, but as a as a, uh, a trial before in advance of uh, general release. But it now enables you to do uh, do meetings online or broadcast meetings, but instead of using the Skype for Business client itself, it will publish it to a browser, so your attendees will be looking at the conference through a browser. The good thing about that is uh, is you can now go from what is uh, a capped at 250 uh, users per, per server uh, through an on-premise deployment, you can now look to utilize the cloud and its functionality have uh, meetings that will reach several thousand users. I think there was the the number was was something rather insane, like ten thousand users you could have up to using Skype for meeting broadcast. The next uh, next box down, so Enterprise Voice in in Office three six five, um, that has uh, is been scheduled for to be released in the in the US any time now. Uh, it's something Microsoft have, have clubbed cla- uh, sorry dubbed Cloud PBX. It won't unfortunately be available into the UK. The, the provisional dates that they were saying or what they've given was uh, was calendar Q1 next year, uh, but that will be the first iteration of a cloud PBX from Microsoft offered via uh, Office 365. They've also released the SKU, so the E4 SKU will now become E5 to include that cloud PBX functionality. Uh, if I'm honest, and, and from what I'm seeing, it will be somewhat limited functionality on release. Um, but it's a step in the right direction. Um, as you can see, that sort of leads into the uh, the, the bottom uh, bottom box there, which says Skype Business is cloud first. Um, that will very much be the case by realistically 2017. But when you think about a full uh, enterprise ready cloud PBX, that is when Microsoft will say 2017 will be that um, will be then. Um, from from what I can see at the moment, realistically, the the, the differences between um, what you'd look to deploy on premise and when you'd look to deploy it in the cloud, the main ones being um, at that point will be obviously integration with uh, things like call recording systems and um, other other business systems integration that you would you would look to uh, to do. A couple of a couple of market endorsements really that, that Microsoft have uh, have provided me. Um, they are as the, those of you that do pay attention to uh, Gartner. They are a, a le- in the leaders quadrant for unified communications, corporate telephony, web conferencing. Um, so they really have taken taken the market and uh, and pushed pushed uh, their way into it. To really become leaders within uh, within this technology space, <clears throat> and again, the, the final two two points there really. Um, I, the last one, I unfortunately I tried to find a more local statistic uh, than seventy nine percent of, of U.S. enterprises. There wasn't any anything um, locally available. Uh, but that is uh, is quite a, quite a large number if you think the 79 percent of uh, of those enterprises are looking to deploy link and based upon the inquiries that we get um predominantly uh, are, are around uh, sky for business and, and how customers can start migrating across so not necessarily looking at uh, a full deployment of enterprise voice but really dipping their toe in the water with uh, say just i am and presence or uh, or conferencing um so it's, it's something that a lot of people are considering, especially when you think of Office 365 and, and it's included as, as standard with, with those SKUs. So just coming back to Nexus, um, and uh, I, I put this uh, slide in just to show that it really is um, an example of, of also who Nexus work with, but also the size of organizations that are deploying it. It's it's not just something as, as most people tend to think with uh, with Microsoft, there's a lot of investment uh, in and around uh, their technologies. Um, so it's only available to the, to the larger enterprises. Um, yes, Nexus have worked with organizations as you can see there, such as Rawlings and Hunter and the National Assembly for Wales, when you're talking thousands of users, um, but then 
there are some smaller organizations there um, that have also deployed the functionality and are, and are using it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, some of those did just start off with uh, simple uh, IM and presence um, deployments, and then they have been scaled. So those are those have scaled from just the initial feature set to full enterprise voice deployments. Um, just because they saw the benefit in, in consolidating their systems, so taking uh, their PBXs, their conferencing systems, and what have you, and just converging them and, and, and putting it into to one platform as opposed to multiple through a single pane of glass. Um, hopefully you do recognize some of those, uh, some of those uh, customers there. Um, they are reference customers, so should you wish to ask for further references from, from Nexus, I'm, we'd be more than happy to provide you with, with information um, to, to contact them should you wish to do so. This is very much a, a Microsoft slide um, and uh, a, suggestion, a suggestion of, of next steps. Um, I'm not going to run through all of those, um, but uh, I suppose the, the underlying thing is um, really get 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 hold of the get hold of Skype Business itself and, and have a play. Um, you can do this via Office 365. You can download the trial of Office 365 and obviously uh, use Skype for Business as well as all the other functionality. If you've got Skype for Business. Uh, Sorry, if you've got Link already, look to uh, look to start uh, upgrading and, and having a play with a client. Um, and and this Microsoft have actually made a 160-day trial of Skype for Business available on their website as well. So the uh, the server-side deployment itself has been avail made available on the Microsoft website. So do feel free to get it. I think it's only really in playing with it and giving it to people to to trial that you you do really begin to see the benefit. Um, I, I don't think Nexus uh, itself would would ever go back because the the benefit that we've seen in in using it from enhanced communication is it's been astronomical, uh, especially uh, when you think how it affects uh, time to uh, time to market and response times and, and what have you to to customers.